Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. Have you ever wondered on the second anniversary of this podcast, what the heck have we been talking about for the last two years? That's what we'll talk about today. Try to be a rainbow in someone's cloud. My Angelo. So this episode is the second anniversary of this podcast. Wow. It's been 104 episodes. Isn't that amazing? And I like that quote because I do try to make other people's lives better. I hope that this podcast inspires you to do more, to achieve more, and try to live your life as an adventure, as an experiment, and do better with your own goals. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the best advice of the year. And because of what season we're in, particularly advice that I thought was good for right now. I think that all of the podcast episodes have had some degree of good advice in them. But sometimes, because of the situations and the things that have happened, certain types of advice float to the top. And that's what we're going to talk about. And so you can review those particular topics if it seems particularly interesting to you right now. So the first piece of advice is don't let your time management system rule your entire life. Make it a tool. And we talked about that in the recent podcast where we talked about the book 4,000 Weeks. I want you to think hard when you're looking at the tools that you have for productivity and think about the advice from that particular podcast about owning those productivity tools and not making them bind you to activities and tasks you shouldn't be doing. But that piece of advice was on July 11th in episode 96. Never lie to yourself because you can't fix what you won't acknowledge or you don't know is the problem. Again, we can't deal with lies in our life, either from other people, worse yet from ourselves. And so if we lie to ourselves, we can't fix it. And that comes from episode 94 on June 27th. So remember, make sure that you're always telling yourself the truth. Never try to read the minds of other people. It's important that while people act in a certain way or say certain things to us, we really don't understand what's going on inside the brains of other people. And when we make guesses about what they're thinking or why they're doing certain things, the only thing it can do is damage relationships. It offers no insight because you're just making it up. You really don't know. That piece of advice came from episode 87, and that was on May 9th this year. Don't assume that you're always right. It gets really easy for us to be confident in our own opinion and to think we're always right. We live our lives because we think that the way we're living our lives makes it easier for us to live our lives. And you have to have at least a little bit of humility to think there's a pretty strong possibility that you're wrong about something in this particular topic you're thinking of. And that piece of advice comes from episode 87 as well. The other piece of advice is don't sweat the wrong stuff. And that particular aspect comes from the book People can't drive you crazy if you don't give them the keys. And his point in saying that you should not sweat the wrong stuff is not to get worked up over things that don't matter. Let people be wrong. Agree to disagree. They may have some good points too. And so that little bit of humility that you may be wrong, they may be right, or we both might have some good points. And all of that advice comes from episode 87 that came out on May 9th. The next piece of advice comes from Mel Robbins, and that's not to put off things that you're ready to act on. She encouraged us to not dwell in our thoughts, not navel gaze about whether we should do something or not to do something, but instead, five, four, three, two, one, go. So keep in mind, if there's something you need to do, do it, act, Quit thinking about it so much. And that piece of advice was in episode 81 on March 28th of this year. Boy, time just flies, doesn't it? It just seems like yesterday. But yes, that's Mel Robbins and her book and TED Talk 
about how you can just get what you want by the five second rule. It's to not let activities, apps, other things punch our dopamine ticket. Don't let it addict us. Don't let it control us. And eventually, those types of things that are fun and interesting become addictive, detrimental, or maybe even destructive in our lives. And then when we realize that something's intentionally trying to get us to have that dopamine reaction, resist even doing it because you're being manipulated. That piece of advice came from episode 80, Dopamine Dizziness, which came out on March 21st. And the last of our don'ts is don't assume the negative view is the wrong one. And this was an important piece of advice that when someone's being negative or maybe even looking at the downside of things, don't assume that they're wrong. That the positive thinking, the optimism is necessarily right. If you plan a picnic, but you don't plan for what happens if there's rain, you could be pretty depressed when your picnic doesn't have alternatives to it. Think about that, too, whenever you're trying to plan anything, like a vacation or your next business adventure. You have to make sure that maybe that negative view could potentially be correct. And what are you going to do if it is? Or how can you avoid the negative aspect of it from happening altogether? And that idea came from Bob Knight and his book, The Power of Negative Thinking. And that was in episode 76, which was released on February 21st. It was February. Who can be positive in February? Now we're going to talk a little bit about the do's instead of the don'ts. Find out if your stress relief is actually making you worse. Meaning that if you're doing certain things, to avoid stress, are they actually making it harder for you in your life? Or is it just a little bit of stress relief? Are your stress relief activities helping you avoid life instead of tackling the problems you really have? And this comes from the book, People's Styles at Work and Beyond. And the thought behind this is that sometimes when we're doing something that's relieving our stress, it's actually putting us in a worse place. Do you stress eat and it's actually making your health worse? Do you decide you're not going to go to the gym that day because you're too stressed out? Sometimes the very thing we're trying to do to relieve stress is actually making our lives worse. And find out what your personality backup style is. When we get stressed, we take either our assertiveness level and instead of it becoming something that helps us persevere, be strong, It starts turning into a nastier version of it. If you are someone who is assertive, you might find out when you get stressed, you start bossing people around, ordering everyone around, or making everyone else stressed. If you know you get timid, you can remember to speak your mind because maybe it's your voice that saves the project. Or if you are someone who is overly assertive when you get stressed out and start barking orders at people, Maybe you can remember to take a step back a moment and try to work with people a little bit better. The next piece of advice is to figure out what season of life you're in and come up with a plan to succeed in it and figure out other things that won't work as well because of the season you're in. You know, for example, if there's a time and the job numbers are great and a lot of people are looking for workers, this is your chance to break out and get a new job. With people really desperate for good help, they'll be willing to pay you more and they may even be willing to overlook some shortcomings you have in that position and be a little bit more willing to train you. Or if you're in a time when things got too expensive, maybe this is a good season to save money. But the important way to succeed at life is to figure out what season you're in and then come up with a plan. And that thought came up in episode 91 on June 6th. Develop a list of virtues that you wish that you could tackle this year and then create a chart, maybe even if it has fun stickers. But remember, we talked about Benjamin Franklin and how he came up with his virtue plan. He came up with a list of 13 virtues he wished to tackle. 
One of them was silence because he felt he barged in too much. Order, where he got his life organized. Those types of things. And then he wrote up a chart for his 13 virtues. And then every week he would tackle one of those virtues and try to do the best he could to improve on those virtues. And it was about seeing slow, constant progress in doing better in his life. And he found that it made him a better person. It helped the people around him like him better. And other than humility, he felt like he really made some good headway on those virtues. And that hint came from episode 89 on May 23rd. Figure out what your fun magnets are and which components of fun you have. Is it certain people, activities, or certain places that you find the best fun? And try to figure out what those individual components are. So when you take a look at the times when you've really had true fun and you notice where they were at, you notice who you were with, or you think about the activities you were doing, you'll be able to have more fun doing those activities because now you understand what those fun magnets are. And that came from episode 84 on April 18th. And that was from the book, The Power of Fun by Katherine Price. I think we could all use a little bit more fun right now. And I think that book had fantastic ideas about how to have more fun. Give yourself the gift of courage. Being brave is about taking on those challenges in your life. And once you learn how to be brave, it can rewrite the whole story of how your life goes. Because once you understand how to be brave, how to have courage, you'll be able to tackle any of the things that you're looking to do. There was a famous quote that said, a coward dies a thousand deaths, but a hero dies but once. Meaning that that coward is just dying a little bit every day, every time they back away from a challenge. So make sure that you take on those challenges and that you do the courageous thing that you're trying to do in your life. This piece of advice comes from Mel Robbins again. This was episode 82 and it was on April 4. Come up with a quick list of things that you could do to improve your mental or physical health. The concept behind this is that if you're tired or you're a little bit hungry, you eat a snack. You're not revolutionizing your life. You're not making a big grand change. You're just having a little snack to help get you by. In this book about health snacks, the author talks about how we can just have these little activities we can do that can shake things up just a little bit. So if we're feeling down, we could go for a walk or talk to a friend that we haven't talked to in a while. If we're feeling like we've been sitting too long, we could have a quick activity that we do just to get our blood pumping again and make ourselves feel better. And that came from the book, Feel Better in Five, 30 plus five minute tips to lose weight, improve sleep, and much more. The next piece of advice is to be a scientist in your own life. It's important that we start looking at our lives as a place where we can do small experiments. I get it. It's scary when you decide that you're going to move across the country or do some big bang change into your life. You can make your life into small experiments, easy to do, they're easy to test, and that will progress your life and get over those fears because each of these experiments are just small. Again, I started the podcast I just got it out there, and each week I tried to do better and better. The cost wasn't very big because I could set up the podcast and keep going, but for me, it was an experiment to see if I could get this done. Be your own best friend. And I think that this is important because we treat ourselves poorly. We talk to ourselves poorly, and we would never talk to another human being, much less our best friend, in the way that we talk to ourselves. And this came from the book, Getting to Yes with Yourself and Other Worthy Opponents. And the idea behind this is how can you negotiate with yourself to get the things you want in life? Because if you don't convince yourself, you're not going to convince other people too. We talked about all the people that Jeff Bezos or Steve Jobs or any of those entrepreneurs, they had to go and convince other people of their vision. But first, 
They had to convince themselves to get it done. This particular advice came from episode 70 from January 10th. Look how cheerful that sounds. And it was January, right in the middle of winter. The next piece of advice is to turn your goals into an epic quest. Fight the dragon. Save the country. Conquer your kingdom. And this came from that book, The Nerdist Way. And it was about making your life an adventure, a big nerd adventure, where you create your character page right out of Dungeons and Dragons or World of Warcraft. You design the game you want to play. You define your weapons and you go make your life a big nerd adventure. It's a lot more fun to say that you're conquering a castle and saving a village than it is to say that you're going to start a new business and post a new blog site. If you make your life an exciting adventure, you'll be more excited to do it too. And that piece of advice came from episode 64 on November 29th. Have a place in your life that gives you the ultimate feeling of coziness, comfort, and a place where you can slow down and relax. And that's when we talked about the huga, we talked about the lagom, and those are concepts coming out of Norway and Sweden where we find a little nook in our lives. We find the right type of activity and we try to live without stress. We get our favorite socks on, we get our favorite blankie on, and then we sit in our comfy little chair, read a book, or just relax. But if you have a place where you can just be calm, that'll make you feel so much better. And that advice came from episode 61 on November 8th. Boy, I just want to drink hot cocoa right now if it wasn't 900 degrees outside learn how to be nice and still get ahead with the generous tit for tat. That means that you're not going to be a jerk. You're not going to take advantage of other people. But instead, you're going to be nice, be a decent person, but always give after something's been given. That tit for tat. Someone's nice to you, then you can respond in an even nicer way. And you always make the first gesture. This is a way that will keep you being a decent human being without feeling like you're being taken advantage of or letting people use you in a way that you don't want to be used. And that piece of advice came from Eric Barker, Barking Up the Wrong Tree, the surprising science behind why everything you know is mostly wrong. He has a brand new book out. I haven't read it yet, but I'm intrigued to see what his new advice is. And that advice was up from October 26th. Oh, that was a long time ago. Episode 59. Find out what you're good at. Find out what you like doing. What does the world need you to do? And what can get you rewarded? Maybe by getting paid. This is called your ikigai. I like this advice because I think that sometimes people will tell you to live your dreams. I don't believe in living your dreams because sometimes you're not good at your dreams. If your dream was to become an NBA basketball player, you're not going to get your dreams. I'm not going to be an astronaut. So there has to be that cross section. When those four things come together, I think that that identifies our purpose in life. Something where we can really move the ball, not just for ourselves, but for other people too. I think that this piece of advice is one of my favorite of the year. That comes from episode 57 on October 17th. And our last piece of advice for this anniversary episode doesn't come from any particular episode that we've done before. But just looking at the economy, that we have war and a lot of uncertainty going on around us, my best advice to you right now is to be flexible and look for opportunities. Sometimes you get this feeling that when things are going and they're particularly tumultuous, we either want to hunker down or we just want to do something completely different, move to the other side of the country or quit our jobs and do something else. But I think it's a little bit different. When we come in the face of tough times, now's our chance 
to look for opportunities because they are all there. The last time that the economy tanked, I bought my house because this house I was looking at dropped significantly in price. And that was my opportunity to get this house. And I still love this house. At a time when I looked for a new job, it was because I had a little bit of savings on me and I could last a period of time where I'm out of work and look for the job that I would really love. When we try to be flexible and look for those opportunities, that's when we're going to find the best things that we can get in this season. So my challenge for you is to think about a few things that if you could have an opportunity knock on your door, what do you wish those opportunities would be? And then start looking for those opportunities. I know my mom was talking a long time ago about getting a new apartment. And so what I told her is to every day go to the newspaper website and go to other websites that have apartments that are for rent. Every day, look at that and just see if something new comes along. It's the same thing here. If I decided I wanted to look for a new house, I would check those things regularly so that I knew what the market looked like. And then if the right thing came up, I'd be ready to jump on it. Think about if you could have an opportunity knock on your door, what would that look like? What are you looking for? So then you can take your eyeballs and start looking for those opportunities and then be ready to jump the Mel Robbins way when those opportunities come up. All right, everyone, thanks so much. Two-year anniversary is really a big deal for me. I'm so glad you're still listening and you're still out there. I see people even around the world who are listening to this podcast. I see you. I see you in all the stats, and I really appreciate the fact that you're there. Thanks so much, and please keep listening. And tell a friend that they could be a rainbow in someone else's cloud by taking small steps.